Okay, welcome to KYD. Let me show you something. You hear that? Silence. <laughs> so, what used to happen is when I would start the truck, it would ding for the seatbelt, and it would ding for the door, and it would ding for the deaf, and ding for changing oil, and it was just incessant. And somebody wrote in once and said, Mark, does, uh, does Ford pay you a dollar for every time that truck dings? And that's really what it felt like. Now the truck is completely silent, and the way we've done this is we've made some modifications through the 4Scan app. Uh, if you follow KYD each week, you know that last Sunday's episode, we were out in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And I connected with Sean and Eric, who also have Super Duties, but they're the kind of guys that really do get into the details. And so I uh, definitely took advantage of their expertise when I was out there to make these changes. Uh, and they shared some other stuff about their trucks that I think is pretty cool. Uh, Sean, Sean's got an F450, and uh, Eric's got an F250, and they just—they know things. They're good people to know because you can learn a lot from them. So I wanted to pass on their information, and I also want to do a video on some of the things that we like about this truck. Um, some things you might not even know. I want to get down to the simple stuff, like how the keypad works, and some things you might not know about that. Um, what, do, what about CarPlay? Some things that are nice, some not so nice. Um, you know, even to what holds the phone, because a lot of people write in and they say, "What do you use to hold your phone?" stuff like that and then of course why did I go with the 2019 when the 2020s came out so lots to cover in this video and there'll be a corresponding blog to link down below um, to get even more information so that's what we have going on in this video let's not wait and dive right in transmission fluid temperature display is enabled so you know when you bump your turn signal mm -hmm. It'll do three times, mm -hmm. and it adds two to whatever your default is when you have a trailer connected. You can set it up to seven, and really? it'll add two. So the bump, I set mine to seven. Yeah, me too. Because I bump it, you know, check the mirrors, make sure, move over, and I don't like my signal to turn off until I'm in the lane going the Okay, no, we don't even worry. I don't use a signal. Oh, perfect. <laughs> we, we can delete it. Well, I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> I, I ran out of blinker fluid. Right. And I, I, I could not find where to get the Absolutely. new blinker fluid. Yeah, and then I've just stopped. And then I got out of the habit and of I using thought, the blinker. We, we found a hack where you can make your own. You make your own blinker make, fluid? Make your own blinker From fluid. From the house? Absolutely. Absolutely. Really? And it's higher quality? It's much higher quality. It's more potent. It lasts a little longer. Like the flashing is the, the lights are brighter? It's brighter. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> So now let's have a conversation about this truck, but I don't want to forget to talk about the horn because a lot of people write in about this horn and uh, <laughs> I, I love the horn. Um, so I want to tell you what, where I got that and what some of the details are on that and then we'll talk more about this truck. So this is a Grover horn. I think it's like a 23 or 25 inch Grover horn that I bought over 20 years ago at a Kenworth dealer. And just this last season, uh, Sean and I in Bozeman, Montana installed it uh, mostly Sean installed it uh, underneath the truck um, beside the gas tank along the drive shaft and I think it's facing backwards we just created a couple brackets and then we've got some air hoses that go into um, a tank that we've got in the back Sean's saying maybe we should have tested it before the camera but I think this is good all right so I don't really know no huh? well wait a second no so well maybe we got to reverse the wires so. Well, what else could it be? Try it again. Try it again? Yeah. All right, take two. Let's hear. I feel kind of bad you're right under there, Sean, yeah. if it does work. Oh, no. Plug your ears. You want me to leave it on? And then when you get, when the wires get hot, we'll know? Well, I don't have a. Oh, well, maybe I do. <laughs> yeah, it's on. It works. <laughs> <laughs> and then we wired it up to one of this upfitter switch right here and uh, I really like this, the horn up there because you just reach up and uh, and hit the horn and you know I like reaching up there to do it but a lot of people write in and they wonder why I didn't get a train horn and uh, well for a couple reasons one is I'm not mature enough to have a train horn for one and second is I actually like honking it and I feel like a train horn is so loud that I would just end up going to jail. So um, I like having this single long horn. I think it sounds great. Uh, there's no affiliation to Grover. It's just where I bought it 20 years ago, uh, but they are still in business out of uh, Los Angeles. So I'll link down below, but I think it's like Grover Horn Company and you can go check it out. But uh, it is it is fun and on a couple occasions, 
Um, I really felt like it was somewhat necessary to have that. And in fact, Trish was just following a drunk driver going up Scottsdale Road where there's no median and someone was crossing traffic, it would have created a head-on collision and she just laid on that horn and got the guy to uh, pull over on the side of the road and then the police came. So, um, you know, there is that, all right? All right, so let's have a quick conversation about this truck. This is a 2019 F250, it's a diesel, 6.7 liter diesel. It's got the six speed, not the 10 speed because it's 2019. It's a four by four with the 355 gear ratio. So I just wanna talk really quick about uh, it being a four by four and I wanna talk about the gear ratio. Um, a lot of people write in and they ask, you know, why do I keep doing four by fours? Is there something about the towing? Um, if anything, four by four actually reduces your payload, like your car cargo carrying capacity, and it reduces your um, uh, towing capacity. But I like having four by four. I like that the truck sits up tall. I like the clearance that it provides. Um, we've got a cabin up in Flagstaff, and when it snows a lot, I like having four, four wheel drive. But in terms of it being essential for towing, absolutely not. Um, 355 gear ratio, I feel like that's a good, if you don't, well, let me, real quick on, because a lot of people ask about gear ratio. The higher the number, the lower the gear ratio is. The lower the gear ratio means the better you would pull from a stop, the better you would pull from a stoplight when you're towing, but it, that would impact your high end, meaning, or your, um, yeah, your high end. High end? Like for instance, when we had a 2019 F450 with the 4.3 gear ratio, which is the lowest gear ratio they make, which means the highest number, um, it would pull eight, or momentum, 18,000 pounds, it would pull it like no problem from a stop, but then when you're not towing and you're going up the I-17, let's say, or highway, it's 75, 80 miles per hour, the RPMs would be much higher than if you had a higher gear ratio. So uh, the 355, at least pulling the Airstream at 8,800 pounds, I feel like is a very appropriate gear ratio. Um, the car, when you're not towing, is super fast. Um, it's got a great top end, that's the word I was looking for, um, and I like that. But if you're not towing all the time and fuel economy is important to you, um, Ford makes a 331 gear ratio, which I think is good. It goes 331, 355, 373, which I think might be only available in gas, but you'll correct me, and then you've got the 410 and the 430. So I really think 355 is nice, but if you start getting into the fifth wheels that are up over, let's say 12 to 15,000 pounds, I think that's when you might wanna consider the 410 and, and lower uh, gear ratios. So that's a little bit about that. We talked about four wheel drive. Um, now what I did not know when I bought this, I mistakenly thought that the 10 speed was associated to the 7.3 gas motor. I didn't realize that the 10 speed was gonna roll out on all the Super Duties in 2020. And that's predominantly why I didn't go 2020 because of the savings that I got on a 2019 when the 20s, when the 20s were out um, is what led me to do this uh, because offsetting depreciation is usually my number one concern because that is the biggest expense in any truck. And so that's why I didn't do it. And then when I found out that the 10 speed, I, I, was, almost, I was kicking myself a little bit just because I wanted to be able to share the difference between the 10 speed and the six speed. Um, so there are some other things though that I've since learned that the 2020 has uh, that I wanna share with you. So let's pop on back. I'm gonna have Caleb hold the camera and I'm gonna share with you just a few things that, uh, well, this, that this truck has and that you might not know it does. And then I also wanna share with you some of the stuff that the 2020 has that this does not. Okay, so let me just share with you a couple things about this keypad. If you wanna lock your truck, it's these lower two buttons like that. You lock it. That's predominantly how I lock this truck. Um, I don't use the fob. But in order to do that, you need to change the computer settings on your screen here so that it allows you to walk away from your truck with the fob still being in it. When you do that, you get rid of that really annoying double honk. But the double honk still occurs. You can't lock it like this until all the other doors are shut. So that's kind of, that's kind of a nuisance because I stand here and I wait until the last person gets out and then I lock the car. And when I unlock it, once you put in your code, if you hit three, all the cords, all the doors unlock, and if you hit five, the tailgate unlocks. Okay, so let me roll these windows up because it is cold. Why are you dinging? Why are you dinging? Why are you dinging? Please, no, 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 no!
Okay, just a few things on the interior. I don't wanna spend too much time here because I wanna get to the, the important stuff like updating the computer. But um, a lot of people wonder why we use a cord because we have Bluetooth. And the reason we use a cord is because A, um, we're driving for long periods of time in some cases and this is charging the phone. B, um, personally, I don't like connecting up to Bluetooth to this thing because then when it comes on, the radio turns on and it's, it seems like everything's always on. When I plug this in, um, CarPlay will automatically engage and there's our three favorite apps uh, associated with CarPlay. Uh, Google Maps, Spotify, and Audible. And pretty much that's all we're gonna listen to, if anything, in the car are those things. And then um, we get a lot of questions about what do we use for uh, to mount. This is a Pro Clip mount and um, let me show you how this works. This, this, they come in a couple different models. Take that off. Oh, did I stick it on? Okay, it has some 3M adhesive, so I can't take it off, but um, it's this, this long bar, which when I first got it, I thought maybe it was a little, cut, a little hokey, but um, it turns out it's all right. I think it just kind of blends in. But this is our second one. The first one we had right here, and when I reach up to grab the shifter, uh, I would always like hit it. So this time I decided to get the model where it is angled toward the driver and we put it on the passenger side. This I think is a great configuration because now it's closer to Trish because she's the one that's handling it or it's closer to me when she's driving because she really does do most of the driving, um, but I can still see it from over there. Um, probably the only drawback to ProClip is you order it specifically to the phone. So if you or your travel partner don't have the same type of phone that can be a little bit of a drawback, but Trish and I tend to do, and your case can also determine if it's gonna fit in there or not. There's some adjustments, but basically it's it's kind of a one size fit all, but it's a pretty nice little case. I think it's in a great location. Um, we have the cord that goes right down in here to the USB. One of the things I was gonna say about the 2020 models, in 2020, down in that compartment, they have a um, wireless charging station for phones. That would be kind of handy. And then the other thing is they have the, is it called the Type C? Caleb, if, this is, if yep. this is USB, they have the Type-C, which is the fast charger, and they have a Type-C connection down there, which would be pretty nice. Um, the other thing some people might not know is if you um, slide over the cup holder, you take this out, and you lift that up like this, there is a spot for a key down in there. You wanna just tell um, everyone where the secret, you wanna tell us the secret? <laughs> I think I just did. This actually serves more than one purpose. Um, if you have both of your keys, when you put it down in there, and then you hit the run button in the truck, and then you turn it off and you put the other key in there and you crank it or you hit run and crank it, I forget the order, um, it'll actually display the door code for the factory door code for your truck. So again, I'm not the kind of guy that goes in and reads all those details, but I, I heard some rumors of that and I'm just passing I'm passing along that information. But um, you know, it is a pretty nice place to, to keep a key. And then uh, speaking of this area, I think we're gonna have like a little special guest, maybe Joel, uh, who's the owner of Harvest Hosts, when I was with him out in Colorado, he showed me a safe that was put in the middle console. So let's cut to Joel and he'll share with you that. Hey Mark, AKYD. Uh, I'll start by saying the reason we put the safe in this truck is that in our last truck, we were on an RV trip uh, in San Antonio, parked in a parking lot right by the Alamo, broad daylight, and someone smashed into it, grabbed a bunch of our valuables and took off. And it looks like they did it in like a minute. Uh, very fast. And it was kind of a, um, you know, a sinking feeling of, of being vulnerable, right? Like I, I always think of my truck as being this fortress and it turns out it's fairly easy to penetrate, you know, through the windows or, or in our case, it looks like a screwdriver right to the lock. So this safe um, is quite sturdy. I mean, for, they say it's 12 gauge metal. I mean, it's solid. Uh, it's a genuine Ford accessory. Uh, this one came with our truck. We, we chose it as an option for an additional $330. Um, but it looks like you can also purchase it from Ford Accessories. They say it's easy to self-install. Um, if you're Mark, that's probably true. If you're Joel, I don't know. <laughs> um, but it's a great safe. Spring-loaded, opens up really easily, tons of room inside. Uh, to give you an idea of scale, you know, here's one of our member wineries. I think I could fit about a case of wine in there. You know, if not 12 bottles, at least nine. Um, tons of room for other you know important things like backup cameras, hard drives, um, petty cash. I keep a bunch of keys in here all lined up. Um, so we don't know. We love it. it. It gives us the peace of mind, you know, knowing that we can be traveling anywhere in the country um, day and night. And hopefully if someone does smash into the truck, at least our valuables, you know, will be safe. So if you're thinking about it, I encourage it. 
One other quick thing about CarPlay, and, and Caleb's here now trying to warm up a little bit, is um, if your audio on CarPlay is super loud, a quick way to fix that is when navigation comes on to tell you to turn right or left, quickly grab the volume control yeah, and turn it down and turn and adjust the audio. So there's audio of the vehicle and then there's audio of the navigation and they're on two separate audio tracks. Oh my gosh, that's a good tip. Who told you that? Who Dad? told us that? Who told, who, who you, know told you that? Um, I think season, you did. Season, in fact, in fact, Caleb, you, I, Caleb is the one that actually told me also about the zoom in button on the backup. I had no idea for the longest time that that plus sign was actually a zoom in feature. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as we're talking about it real quick, let's just take a look at these different camera modes. All right, so you have the backup camera and then the 360 camera and then just the standard backup camera. And then this is a wide angle backup. Yeah, wide angle backup camera. Cool. Never use that. This is the fifth wheel camera. That's almost useless. Why is that? Uh, the lighting has to be absolutely perfect for you to actually see. If it zoomed in, it would be killer. And it, and you know, it does zoom in to a certain extent, but just not enough. enough. Okay, so I mentioned that the fifth wheel camera is useless. And the reason for that is because it just seemed like most of the time the light was hitting the camera on top of the cab and it was just not good enough to end up using. And I ended up getting out of the truck like three or four times just to line up the kingpin to the fifth wheel hitch. Well, you probably know JD from Big Truck Big RV. Well, as I like to say, he's friends with KYD. And I was chatting with JD about this and he says, oh, I got the solution. Put a camera using the auxiliary inside the bed of his truck. So he sent me this, I gotta share it with you, check it out. Basically what I'm gonna be able to do is mount this camera in such a way that it will give me visibility to when I'm about to hitch a gooseneck trailer to the goose ball. On the navigation screen, you're gonna have the ability when the truck's in reverse to go to multiple camera angles. I have this high center mount camera angle. The problem with this camera angle is that it does not actually pass the toolbox and let me see into the bed so I can see where the goose ball is. But on the screen, I have the ability to use this auxiliary camera function. Now this is usually intended for the Ford OEM camera that you can connect to the back of a trailer to help you see what's going on behind the trailer. I have another solution for that that I'm gonna be installing, but what I really wanna do is use this auxiliary camera connection to better know when I'm lined up with the goose ball. Now I can easily know when I'm straight in the bed, basically when the hitch is lined up side to side and I'm ready to back up to it. But the more difficult part is knowing when the gooseneck coupler is directly above the ball and you're ready to lower it in place. And that's where this camera is gonna come in really handy. So back at the camera. So I plan on mounting this camera right here on the side above the wheel well pointed inwards. And that's simply going to give me my positioning whenever I'm backing up to a gooseneck connection. So I'll know exactly when it's over the ball. All right, I thought that was a killer uh, modification to the truck. And JD has his entire video on that, which I'll link right there. And if you're not subscribed to his channel, wealth of knowledge when it comes to big trucks and big RVs. So definitely subscribe to JD's channel. And for that matter, if you're not subscribed to KYD, now's the time. Right? Now's, now is now's the, the time. time. This one's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Because look, you can go you can go right or left like this. Check that out. And it goes pretty far. So I actually do use this uh, on occasion. But the camera I also love is, um, let me put, oh, you can't really tell because the lighting, but here Caleb's going to go to the front and he's going to, and he's going to show you, but this, and then you can see Caleb around the side. Yeah, this, this camera is fantastic. Oh, he's cleaning it. I think it's just the sun though. Yeah, there you go. The front camera is fantastic, I must say. Eric mentioned something today that I had no idea, and that is that apparently the front camera has a little sprayer. A little sprayer to pop out. So I gotta see it. I, I, I believe you, but I have to see it. When you clean the windshield, it automatically pops out and cleans the front camera. So no bugs get on your front camera. That's exactly right. Or, in bad weather, sometimes snow gets up there, but I didn't know I had the ability to clean it. To clean it, right. So I wanna see it, right. and I'm sure you do too. So let's, let's do this. Let's check it out. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Do it again. What else? What else does your truck do? What else did you find? What peculiar little things has, have you discovered it does? Um, we found, uh, we discovered the brake controller is not as black and white as it seems. That if you, when you squeeze the brake controller, it'll mm -hmm. stop the trailer brakes immediately. Mm -hmm. If you press the brake, 
it takes into account how fast you're going and the amount you're pressing and whatnot. So if you have your trailer wheels off of the off the ground, mm -hmm. spin them and press the brake pedal on the truck, it, it won't, won't stop, stop the wheels because the truck's not moving. Interesting. And, and I think that might be something you would only experience if you were testing it. It was entirely, we were testing out some, some brake settings and, mm -hmm. and that's how we came across it. And it was a moment of concern because you press the brake and the trailer wheel wasn't stopping. Yeah. And then after finally researching a little more, you find that it's not just true uh, so even though you have the setting to set it to four, six, eight, whatever, it, there's another little algorithm in there else. that's that's increasing the right. brake pressure on the thing. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, absolutely. In case it, anyone were to be doing, I, of course, I only know the two of you would ever be yeah. the one to discover something like that. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> it becomes con you know disconcerting when you're brake. What were you guys even doing on the trailer that would require you to test that? I had, I had a. A brake failure in May, mm -hmm. and I replaced the brakes on one of the hubs. Mm -hmm. And when we got the price, I'm like, let's check this. Just, let's test you know, it. Let's yeah. check this. Yeah. And they were like, it's not working. Oh. <laughs> it's a little panic. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. What do you? What did you discover in your truck? Any peculiar things like the little washer? Um, Camera washer. Well, I mean, the the whole upfitter thing. Who knew how fun that? Let's that go to the is. upfitters. Let's go to the upfitter switches. Upfitters. You know, obviously we have six upfitter switches. Yeah. Uh, I've used four of the six. Yeah. Uh, the first one. Well, let's start on six. First of all, um, on five and six, you can set to. Uh, you can change, slide the fuse in the fuse box or the upfitter box. Yeah. To allow you to power them when your truck's not powered. So five and six are, work right now, even though your yeah, run is not. Yeah, factory they don't. All you do is move a, a fuse that is in the in the upfitter box. Piece you move of cake. it over. Done. Okay. Done. So what have you put on five so and six? So I now? have. I don't have anything on five. On six, I installed some rear lights. Oh, nice. Uh, so you know, hooking up the trailer at night, that kind of thing. So if the truck doesn't have to be running. Turn them on. My rear lights are on. On three, I yeah. have my Viair heavy duty onboard air. I mounted that under the or on the frame underneath the passenger side of the cab. Now, interesting. So you turned it on. Why is it running? Because wouldn't it be full? No, it's not full. Oh, I so you're filling it. I'm filling it now. What? Do you have a right. tank on there? I do have a tank. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so mine's always full. Oh, I leave it on. You leave it on. I, I don't leave mine on. All so the I leave mine on, but the way it's wired, it's wired to the run switch. Okay. So I leave it on all the time because it can't turn on when the truck is off. Right. So you could leave it on all the time. I could leave it on. Just if I just engage the upfitter switch and just leave it on. Okay. Right. Okay. So all right, it's good. on now. Now there's a reason you put on three. I, I might have done that. Three. There. Yep. Each upfitter switch has a different fuse rating, and I didn't yeah. really check to see if one was the best fuse for my dual air ARV. Did you right. did you choose three because it was a yeah, bigger the, fuse? One through four are twenty five amp fuses. Oh, so they're all twenty five. Yeah, five and six are forty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So twenty five. But what I'm saying is, there's no difference between my one and your three. They're both twenty five amps. Yeah, that's right. So why'd you choose three? Three? Well, because I had one and two. Some, well, I wanted one for the air horn. I mean, okay. you gotta have the air horn on one. <laughs> I do agree. I, I should have done that. So <laughs> two, I have installed a high idle. Yeah. And so I had three. That was the next one. I'm like, well, we'll put the. You know the vi air on yeah. three. So, okay. Yeah. You know, okay. So let's keep it on to okay. get full maximum air, so we can hear what your horn sounds uh, like. Okay. Well, definitely, we definitely have to do that. So okay. I, since we're talking about the vi air, in this funny little compartment that we all have in our Super Duty, yeah, it doesn't really do anything. Yeah. I've installed the uh, your switch, a, a gauge. Oh, nice. For the the air tank and the switch for the airbags that we okay. have installed. Right. The oh, they're both in there. And they broke, yeah. Nice. So, All right, well, that's where I have mine, but it looks like you have an extra gauge. What's, what's your other gauge? The other gauge just tells me how much pressure is in the tank. Oh, okay, okay. So, so that's a return hose yeah. that I chose not to do. We we elected to just know that the tank is 150. Yeah. And leaving it on means that it's 150. Okay. But I can't reduce it. You can reduce yours? Well, I mean, I, I can't. There's no relief valve. There's on no the relief gauge. valve. Okay, I mean, yeah. You know, yeah. you got the air horn. That's a, that's a good way to release it. Yeah. All right, the other thing that the other thing we were talking about was a high idle. Right. And you've installed for sixty dollars a device that allows you to high idle. Uh, not not even sixty dollars. It's probably more like you know above fifty. Okay. Um, Where'd you get it? 
I ordered it from Amazon. You okay. know, everybody orders it from okay. Amazon. Well, you know, there's no Radio Shacks though. <laughs> but no F450 Radio Shack. That's right. I just <laughs> I just installed a I think it's a 10,000 ohm resistor in a wire cluster on the passenger side, mm -hmm. and then tied it into one of the upfitter switches. Which one? Uh, number two. Number two. Number two. And this runs a high idle. It'll it'll run a high idle. And the idea here is that a high idle is in a way maybe even be better for the diesel so they can really warm up absolutely okay. yeah, that's what does it, it also help with the diesel particular particulates as you say the in the def well it'll it'll running running at a higher temperature will help with that okay. right yeah right all right well let's so, hear what that difference so we're i we're idling at 700 okay. rpm whatever usual yeah so we click that yep. gotta have the parking brake on oh you do yep so it kicks up to 1200. Okay. I actually have two fuel cards. I've got the TSD Logistics card and I have the Innovation Energy Group fuel card. So both of these cards, I have both of them because uh, with the Innovation Energy Group card, there actually could be even more savings and there's more gas stations like this Sinclair, which is not available on the TSD Logistics card. Plus, the uh, Innovations card has the ability to have a commercial account. So if you have an LLC and you do it under a commercial account, there could be a little bit more savings on that. So if you don't have these cards and you drive a diesel, they, they legitimately provide savings. I'm not the kind of guy that goes around and looks for like cheaper fuel because often, what I, my, my number one goal, my main mission, is how do I get in and out without damaging anything? That is my number one goal. And quite frankly, I don't care what the fuel price is if it's a safe place. Well, if you have a diesel, the safest place to get fuel is at a truck stop. But if you come here, please, don't dilly-dally. Be prepared, come in, get the fuel. When you're done fueling, move up to the yellow line, stay out of the truck driver's way because the last thing we need is to have signs that say no RVs because there's somebody that's like using the bathroom in their RV when they're fueling up and like you got three semi trucks behind you. So that's just a little, um, just a, maybe a little word to the community that if you are gonna use these truck stops, let's just be, let's be quick because these guys make a living driving for, driving their trucks and make it easy for them. Anyhow, so uh, if you want more information about these fuel cards, go to keeperdaydream.com forward slash fuel and I list out the pros and cons to each of those uh, fuel cards and then you can make a decision as to what's up for you. And of course, if you use KYD, that's, that's kind of a, as, a, as a referral, that's kind of cool too. All right, time to fuel and I'll let you know what the savings are. Right here, savings for this fuel pump. All right, the other thing I love about a truck stop and these fuel cards is that I don't have to go inside when I'm in a regular, like a Shell or a Mobile or Exxon, something like that. I have to put my card in twice because I'm gonna fill beyond $100. See that size of that thing? This will fill 60 gallons. Of course, I never quite get that much in these tanks, but it'll fill, it'll fill fast. All right, so a quick comment about fuel economy. So right now, uh, I'm getting, towing an Airstream that weighs 8,800 pounds with this truck. Um, I'm getting 13 miles to the gallon on average. So probably like closer to 10 towing and maybe closer to 15 not towing. And I look down here right now and I'm looking at an 817 mile range, which is pretty, pretty stellar. Uh, and if you don't, like I said, if you don't have a fuel card, it's just, they're, they're not only easy savings, but I think they're a little bit safer to get fuel. I think we all just need to do our best to stay out of the trucker's way. And now um, let's get back to uh, whatever else we have in this video. Now it's time to talk about these four scan updates. That's updating the computer in your truck. And when I was out with Eric and Sean, we were in the cab of this truck for close to an hour making these updates. Decided to summarize this section and go through all the updates we made and then also link to keepyourdaydream.com forward slash super duty so that you can get uh, like a, maybe a list of all of the updates we made, what's possible, and any additional information that we want to or provide about these updates. Okay, but a few, a couple disclaimers right out of the gate. First is, I know a lot of people are going to be concerned about a warranty. If you make a change to your com your truck's computer and then you have an issue, will it still be covered under warranty? I personally have never had an issue making any mods to our truck, not going from a 30 gallon to a 60 gallon tank, not doing anything on the frame, not changing into these computer settings. Is it possible? I'm sure to a certain extent it's possible if you have a very specific issue to the thing that you modified and things aren't going really well from a customer service perspective that they could use that against you. I personally have never come across that situation, but I think it's something to maybe consider, um, especially if a warranty is high on your list. I know for me, 
often I'm, I want to go, like for instance, the death wobble. And I'm glad I remember this because I want to talk about the death wobble. We still haven't gotten this fixed, but I've received so much amazing input from the community as to how to correct this. I'm actually not going to go to the dealer to get the death wobble fixed. I feel like I have, through your help, through the community's help, I have a better solution, a more complete solution. And so even though, yeah, sure, it's covered, covered under warranty, um, I'm going to find a shop that will allow me to record so I can share the solution with you. Um, so anyway, that's kind of how I take on stuff like that. Now, um, another quick thing, couple, two things on Forescan. So what Forescan is, is it is a like a software application that only works on a PC, not a Mac, that allows you to go into your truck's computer through what's called an OBD2 reader. And there's two different versions of an OBD2 reader. You can get the wired USB version, which I have uh, in here. I think you just plug it into the little computer outlet and then you plug the USB into your computer. Or like Eric has, he's got the wireless uh, OBD2 reader that he plugs in. And the advantage of that is he can then use his phone to get readings on his computer. So if he got a check engine light, he can plug that in, use his phone, and he can get the reading off of his phone, which is kind of handy. And then of course, in this case, we used it to plug in, and then he was on his laptop making these, making these updates. If you're gonna go down this path, it's very important that you make a backup of your computer, of your, the current system, the current configuration, and then save that off. And then when you get everything just the way you want, and it's all dialed in, make another backup. Because if you were to go to uh, the dealer, for service and they happen to change all the settings back to default, you would lose all the work that you put into, you know, getting this dial here and updating their fuel size, your tank fuel size and stuff like that. So make another backup when you have it done. Okay, as you know, and what we've talked about so much is just turning off the chimes, which I love what I'm calling stealth mode. I love that the chimes are no longer there, but there still are some chimes. There are some configurations in which it still dings. And uh, I'm okay with that, right? I mean, if it says that that's an essential ding, then whatever. At least I just got rid of the, the majority of the dinging that I know you've been hearing and has been driving you crazy. The other one that was big on my list is changing the size of the fuel tank. So in the beginning of this season, we went over to Cliffs Welding and we changed out our fuel tank to an OEM standard tank, probably around 34 gallons, I'm guessing, to an SNB uh, fuel tank, midship fuel tank up underneath. So it's not in the bed of the truck. Um, very streamlined tank, won't see it, I love it. But the computer still thinks it's an OEM tank. So we went in there and we had changed the size to 60 gallons. The fuel gauge still reads normal, but the miles to empty do not. So now when I fill up, I have probably, I think the last I saw was like 800 mile range or something, it was crazy. So that was kind of nice to get that updated. And by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm providing a list of these updates, maybe more so that you know what's possible to go change within Forescan than a tutorial on how to do it. But if you want more information on how to do it, just go visit the, the URL, keeperdaydream.com forward slash super duty. Okay, number three is we changed the, the diesel exhaust filter display. So as a, uh, within the Lariat and Platinum King Ranch trim levels, they do not show you how much the diesel exhaust filter has been used in a percentage. So for instance, if it starts off at 100 and it goes down all the way down to zero, and then the truck automatically does what's called a, a diesel particulate regeneration, which means it, it, it finds out when the truck is running at super high OPMs, maybe when you're, you're on the freeway, and it can generate that much heat. It goes through about a half hour regeneration and it burns off all of the particulates and it makes it back down to zero. Now, with the update, I can see what percentage that it's going down. So I can see that it's like 55% before it does a regen. And then the other thing is we went in there and we made it so that I can actually do in uh, a regen on my own. I can actually initiate a regen just sitting here in the driveway, which means the RPMs would go way up, both the fans would start running and it would burn it off automatically. Um, I, we also changed the, the settings so it would allow me to turn off auto regen if we ever needed to. Like for instance, let's say I was really close to a regen and I was only going to go out for 10 minutes. I can turn that off so it didn't initiate a regen when I wasn't going to be in the truck long enough for it to complete the job. And perhaps maybe that's where some of these diesel issues are coming from is that it's halfway into a regen and then you get home and you turn it off and you never knew it was doing it. So, um, so there's some settings to go check that out. Okay, one quick one that I can't believe I almost forgot. Uh, you have the ability in your Super Duty, at least on the 17 or newer, to put a gauge, any gauge you want, 
on the upper right hand corner and I think it defaults to the turbo boost which or the turbo the diesel turbo which isn't really information I need to know but def on the other hand and how much is left is something that I feel like is uh, pretty important to, to know so I've gone into the settings and I have replaced the turbo boost with the def gauge on the top so I always have access to it a little quick tip and then the other thing that I really like is we changed the TPMS low pressure warning settings so uh, as you know you've heard me say before i inflate tires to the load on the tire plus maybe 10 percent and these michelin tires are 80 psi which has a load that far exceeds the load that's actually on the tires and the more air you have in the tires uh, the more it creates kind of a it rides on the center of the tire and it's just a really firm stiff tire and so, you know, I like to be within the load rating to get a nice footprint on the road and also make a more comfortable ride. And so the problem with that is the, on this truck, the TPMS warning was like under, you know, 55 PSI or 65, I think, let's say, let's say 60 PSI, I think it was. So I always have my TPMS light on. So now we've adjusted that to what I think maybe really should be the low TPMS warning and that light's gone away. So that's kind of a, that was kind of a pet peeve that I'm glad we fixed. Um, we already talked about the deaf regeneration, um, the double honk on leaving, you know, that's not something applied to me because um, I, I just use the keypad and I've turned all that off. But if you use your truck like a normal person would, um, you can turn off the double honk when leaving. I know that's annoying to people. Um, we also adjusted the fog lights on high beam so that when your high beams are on, your fog lights stay on. So if you're interested in getting all those updates, you can go, you know, you know where to now. And um, beyond that, you know, I'm really satisfied with this truck. I'm, I'm eager to, to share a video on, on making the corrections to the death wobble situation. We've had four Ford trucks in the last five years, and uh, this is the only one that we've experienced the death wobble situation with. Um, but even with that, you know, I know that it's something that we can correct. And um, I think these trucks have been really great. So I'm very, I'm very happy with them. I like some of the features like um, exhaust, brake, uh, that really holds the truck back when we're going down steep descents. And I will say that the biggest thing for us towing a travel trailer is that when we move from a half ton to a three quarter ton, the increased suspension and power made a big difference in terms of um, how much the trailer was pushing around the truck. Uh, we felt like we had more more confidence, more control, and we were able to drive longer in, in a day. Uh, I think Trish also enjoyed towing more in, in these trucks than, than our half-ton trucks. But as we've always said, start small, start now, don't let anything stop you. Um, whatever you have is the right truck uh, to get going because um, memories are for everybody in any, any situation. I've never heard anyone say, oh boy, we had such a great time. I only wish that I had a, a better truck or a better RV because years from now you forget about that kind of stuff. And it really just becomes what what are you buying it for? And so that's 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 always what we want to represent all this stuff too, because it's fun to talk about trucks and it's fun to talk about all these things and modifications. But at the end of the day, it's really what are you buying it for and where are you going to go and who are you going to go with? And it's about making memories and making the most out of everything. So we hope you got something out of this video, maybe one little um, trick or tip on on updating your Ford. And otherwise, we'll uh, we got another video as we make our way from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, through Texas, and finally make way or our way back into Arizona. So. That's it for this video and we'll see you next Sunday.